This is the Logitech Master MX3. It's the most popular mouse for creatives, whether it's Mac or Windows, photography, video editing, or design. But why? Is it because this mouse has two scroll wheels? Is it because of the customizable buttons? Or because of the huge productivity improvements which puts the power of top tier efficiency literally in the palm of your hand? Power that lasts for weeks and even when it needs to charge, you can still use it. But I mean, what respectable company wouldn't think of that? Or could it be it's ergonomic design? That sleek finish that looks at you in the mornings and says, hey, come hold me. Push my buttons and scroll my wheels and... Okay. That's a little too much. But in a way, this mouse did change my life. It made me way more productive, way more efficient, and really locked me into the flow state. Fresh out of the box, it's okay. But once you learn how to customize it with what I'm about to show you, this will be a tool that you cannot live without. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is open up Logi Options Plus. That's the software that you can use to program this mouse. And at first you'll only see global settings, but to get the true power out of this mouse, you need to hit the add application. So let's start with the easiest buttons, which are going to be the front thumb button, this back thumb button, and the button that's right behind the scroll wheel. Here in DaVinci Resolve, this front button is split, the back button is delete, and this middle button will toggle linking on and off. Here in Lightroom, the front button is next photo, while the back button is flag or pick, and this middle button on top is before and after. And over in Photoshop, this top button here is the space bar, which gives me the ability to click and drag things around if I combine that with the left click. And this back button, if I hold that down and click and drag left and right, up and down, I can change the size and hardness of the brush that I'm using. And then the middle button is for selecting a layer mask on whatever layer I'm on. And once we get to the gestures portion, you'll see why that is such a game changer with that layer mask selector. So to set those up, it's fairly simple. You're going to select your application. So let's go with DaVinci Resolve. You'll click on that button on the image of the mouse. We'll spend most of the time with keyboard shortcut. I recommend that you do also, because if there's a keyboard shortcut in the application that you're going to be using, that's gonna be more reliable than Logitech trying to guess what it should be or hoping that they're the same thing. So we'll be spending most of our time with keyboard shortcuts, but not all of our time because some of the best ones actually aren't under the keyboard shortcut. So once you click keyboard shortcut, you'll just type in your keyboard shortcut. So for me, that's C for split clip in DaVinci Resolve. And then this back one, same thing, click in there, hit delete. And this top one, command shift L for linking. Now Lightroom, pretty much the same thing, command right for the front button, P for pick for the back button, and the before and after for that middle button. And for Photoshop, it's the space bar for the front button, control option for the back button, and command slash for the top button. So now for the scroll wheels. For DaVinci Resolve, I keep the top one exactly by default, but the side one I use to zoom in and out of the timeline. Here in Lightroom, the main scroll wheel is by default, but the side scroll wheel is going to zoom in and out. And if I middle mouse click, it's going to hide the tool overlay, which if you've ever done tons of removal or clone stamping, or you need to get real close and tight, that tool overlay can sometimes get in the way. You can't see your edges. It's a nightmare. And here in Photoshop, the main scroll wheel is going to be for zooming in and out. And the side scroll is also zoom in and out, but it's a lot less aggressive, easier to kind of fine tune and get it where you want. And clicking the middle mouse button is going to change the colors of my palette here. So if I'm using the brush tool and trying to mask something out, I can go ahead and do that. And if I make a mistake, go ahead and click it, revert the color back, and there we go. For Lightroom, the keyboard shortcut is H for the wheel button and command equal sign and command minus sign for the zooming in and out. For Photoshop, the keyboard shortcut for the wheel button is X. And for the side scroll, this time we're actually going to use the recommended zoom in and out. It just worked better for me in Photoshop. And over here in DaVinci, the middle button, keep that the same, the scroll, keep that the same, but the side is going to be command with the equal sign or command with the minus sign, and that's to zoom the timeline in and out. So now things are gonna get interesting because we're gonna talk about gestures. It might look like there's only one button left, but this one button is five buttons and it's awesome. You've probably noticed I'm going back and forth between applications, between desktops extremely quickly, and that's because I'm holding down 
this gestures button. And if I hold that down and move the mouse left, right, up or down, it's going to do whatever I tell it to do for that direction, along with just single clicking it. So left and right always stay the same, but up, down, and single click is different for every application. Starting with DaVinci Resolve, a lot of my videos involve a lot of speed ramping, and sometimes instead of going into Fusion, I just do it in the edit page, even though DaVinci Resolve could really get better at speed ramping, I, but here's how I made it less horrible. So if I hold down the gesture button and just move the mouse up, it's gonna bring up my read time controls. And I can go in here, use my X speed point, change this to 800%, sure. Now, if I wanna ease that, I'm going to hold down the gesture button and move the mouse down. And if I just single click it, it will go ahead and play. And just like that, we have our speed ramp that you saw earlier in this intro. Over here in Lightroom, if I just single click it, it's going to fit the image to the screen. And if I click it again, it will go back to my previous zoom point. And if I hold it down and move up, it's going to bring up my remove tool. And if I hold it down and move it down, it's going to bring up the masking panel. And here in Photoshop, if I just tap it, it's going to fit it to the screen. And if I hold it and move it up, it's going to select the next layer up. And if I hold it and move it down, it'll select the next layer down. And that's why the select layer mask with that middle button is so nice, that top button, because as I move it down and I get to the layer I want, I can just go ahead, click that, select the mask and start working. So it's a little bit different setting that up. You'll go ahead and click this gestures and it will be defaulted at window navigation, but go ahead and click custom. So once you've got custom selected and you select one, you'll go ahead and get this window. We got desktop left, desktop right, space, and then command R to bring up the read time and shift C to bring up the read time curve. And then here's a quick one for Photoshop. Go ahead, pause it, take a screenshot, and for Lightroom. But now for something that we all use, which is Finder or File Explorer, this front button is going to be up, back button is going to be down, and this middle button behind the wheel is delete because on Mac you have to hit command delete and it's not the easiest button to reach, so it's not one that you can really accidentally click. And, and now for the gestures. If I hold it down and move down, it's going to open the selected folder. And if I hold it down and move up, it's going to close it. This is great because with Command A, select everything, I can open everything up and really need to find what I'm looking for. Hit Command A and go ahead and close it all back up. And then we have the middle mouse button, which is to create a new folder. And there's one more feature that I totally love about this mouse. But before we get there, if you wanna see how I made this look all filmy and cool, go ahead and check out this video. That video blew up, thank you guys so much. Stoked to have all you new subscribers here. And comment down below your favorite movie of all time. So we only went over the buttons, but there's plenty of other really cool things this mouse can do, especially with the point and scroll. Of course, you can change your pointer speed and the thumb wheel speed. But one really cool thing is you can go from free spin or ratchet and it will change depending on the application. With free spin, it's just going to just spin. You don't hear anything, do you? We move it to ratchet and it's that little bit harder kind of clicks in place. And that's great because in some softwares like Photoshop, I have it on ratchet mode so that I don't accidentally bump it and increase my brush size by like a billion with ratchet. It holds it in place a little bit easier and makes it a little bit more tactile. But when I'm using something like DaVinci Resolve, I like it to be a little bit smoother. It's not going to make any drastic changes. And as you switch between, you can actually feel the mouse click it into ratchet or free spin mode. Okay, that's it. Best mouse ever. Now you know why. A lot more videos coming soon that aren't just tutorials, aren't just gear related. We're gonna, we're gonna have some feel good videos. Kind of like some short stories, like the intro to this Dehancer video. All right, toodles.